Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to be giving a high-level overview of business intelligence infrastructure. For this video, I'm going to be using this diagram, which can be found at the projectbi.net website. Project BI is an analytics agency. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO. And what we do is we set up business intelligence infrastructure and build custom reports for large uh, Shopify businesses. Since we're focused on setting up the infrastructure, I'm going to use this uh, example to explain these concepts. So in this diagram, right at the top, we've got a list of all the data sources which um, could be relevant for a large Shopify business. We have Shopify itself, Amazon, Facebook ads, etc. So our goal is first and foremost when setting up business intelligence infrastructure is our end goal is to be able to build out custom reporting. There's lots of different reporting solutions out there which are out of the box, but since we're, you know, um, working with a mature business that wants to do some fancy stuff, we need to implement this model. So step one of this model to allow us to build custom reporting is to extract all the data out of the sources and move that raw data into a data warehouse. So that's the first two icons you see over here. I'll go to choice for ETL, which stands for extract, um, transform and load is a tool called Fivetran. Now, if you're interested in ETL, I'll put a card up at the top of the, the video, which will take you directly to a dedicated video on ETL, which I recently published. So step one, get the data out of the sources and place it in a data warehouse. The next step in the process is now that we've got that raw data, we need to actually structure it for our needs. For that process, um, we, uh, I recommend a tool called DBT. That's what my agency uses. It's really the market leader in data modeling. And that is the third piece over here. So number one would be Fivetrain. Number two would be the data warehouse. Or rather, number one would be ETL. Number two would be the data warehouse. Number three would be data modeling. Now in this diagram, we also have GitHub. GitHub and DBT kind of work together. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but essentially you write code in DBT to model the data, and that code gets saved in GitHub as a, a repository. So that's why you see a code repository. So number one, ETL. Number two, data warehouse. Number three, data modeling. The fourth piece, which makes up the final piece of what I call the big four framework is data visualization. Our go-to um, solution for that is Tableau, but there's many other options out there from um, Looker Studio to uh, tools like Mode, um, Power BI, etc. There's no shortage of data visualization options. So once again, just to go through the entire flow, we extract the data out. And by the way, there's two ways we can do that. We could use an out of the box solution like Fivetran or depending on, you know, the mindset, uh, the budget, you know, et cetera, of, of the business, they might end up building the ETL um, piece of the infrastructure in-house themselves. So they might go ahead and hire a data engineer that writes a lot of code and essentially build scripts which can extract the data out of the numerous sources. And there's different pros and cons f to do that. I prefer using an out-of-the-box solution like Fivetran for that. So we extract the data out, we place it in the warehouse, we then create model, uh, we write code to model that data for our specific needs. Typically you build essentially multiple layers of um, of data modeling within the warehouse so that the outputs of DBT is done in a very modular and logical approach. All that code is going to be saved nicely in GitHub so you don't lose it and you have version control and there's a ton of benefits to have 
this combination in place. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and build our custom reporting inside a tool like Tableau. And once that's done, all the different stakeholders in the business can log into Tableau, view their reports, and build up that habit of consuming the data for and using it for decision making. So that's it, high level overview. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments below. If you did find this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm and gets more analysts to see our content. And finally, if you like this type of content and you want to um, be notified when we publish, when I publish new videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button. That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.